The Berkwith Cave, known for its treacherous silty conditions, was chosen as the next exploratory dive site by Colin Pryor. The dangerous nature of this cave deterred many from diving there, and this left many parts of the cave less explored. Thirty years after the last exploration of this cave, Colin bravely decided to dive deeper into the unexplored portion of the cave that many experienced divers dreaded. The Horizontal Stream Cave, Berkwith Cave, is a component of the extensive network of related caves that surrounds Bentham in northern England. This system was notorious for its low visibility and constrained passageways. Amateur cave explorers can visit a few short sections of the cave, but only experienced divers can access the extensive underwater sections and subsequent above-water caves. The tiny, constrained corridors in Berkwith Cave make it extremely challenging to navigate while wearing heavy diving gear. It also contains a lot of silt, which, if disturbed, might completely impair the vision of anyone plunging into the cave. Although more significantly, the previous divers had left a lot of slack rope lines around the cave to make it easier to navigate. The last successful exploration of the cave was carried out in the 1970s by diver Oliver Statham, who rated it as challenging, demanding, and dangerous. But almost 30 years later, a tragedy that was directly related to this dive occurred. Colin Pryor, a cave diver and explorer who was 29 years old, had been diving most of his life. At the age of 11, Colin started caving on the weekends with the scouts in Chandler's Ford, so he had a lot of experience. His courage and love for cave diving were unrivaled. He dove gallantly while others retreated in fear. He met Gemma Stone and fell in love while on one of his many excursions. While staying at the Yorkshire Subterranean Society School close to Ingleton, North Yorkshire, Gemma, another enthusiastic cave explorer, met Colin. As soon as they started dating, they clicked, and they went cave exploring together. The following several years saw Colin and Gemma traveling the globe and going on three or four monthly cave exploration dates until Colin and Gemma decided to go diving in the low Berkwith cave system. It, therefore, came as no surprise that he would wish to try this extraordinarily difficult task, which had only been tried by two other people. In his opinion, the cave system had not been thoroughly examined in more than 30 years, and many areas of it remained unexplored. When the specified day finally arrived, Colin was inspired to accomplish this groundbreaking feat in the dangerous world of cave diving. Colin went to the dive site unafraid of the risks and set up ropes and lines to help him carry his equipment into the cave and to the area where he would enter the water. With Gemma's assistance, he prepared for the exploration and was then prepared to dive. However, two things happened that made them postpone the dive. There was bad weather, and Colin received the unfortunate news that Stuart Anderson, a friend, had become trapped in a cave while exploring and required rescue. Colin and Gemma had to halt their intended dive at the Low Berkwith Cave to rescue Stuart, but as a result, he missed his chance to go diving. Here's the thing. Just like in the case of Stuart, cave diving can be quite dangerous, so even a perfect dive can take a wild turn. Some are not lucky enough to make it out alive, which is why many consider cave diving an extreme sport. For this purpose, there are some precautions divers are trained and educated on. This is to help them have a greater chance of survival in the deep. One such thing is the use of guidelines. Divers use guidelines to ensure their safety and navigate through underwater environments. It helps them prevent from getting lost in unfamiliar areas, conserve their air supply, and facilitate necessary decompression stops. Following a guideline can also improve their visibility underwater by minimizing disturbances to sand and silt. In addition, using a guideline marks a safe entry and exit point and reduces the risk of getting tangled in underwater obstacles. The other important safety precaution is the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds is a diving principle where divers use one third of their air supply for the descent and exploration, another third for the return journey, and the remaining third as a reserve in case of an emergency. It helps divers plan for the unexpected and ensures they have enough air to safely explore the underwater world. Following the rule of thirds is a crucial safety measure for divers. 
Although in some unfortunate situations, divers follow these rules and end up dead due to some other reason. On March 13th, Colin called Gemma and informed her that he would be leaving for a solo dive at 3.30 p.m. Gemma was unable to accompany Colin to the dive because of work obligations that day. Colin entered the cave through the entrance, carrying the dive gear he would require. He put together his dive equipment by himself, making sure to check his pressure gauge, regulator, and emergency regulator for any faults that would affect his dive. He was ready to become one of the first people to ever explore the enormous cave system beyond its known depth. Everything was operating flawlessly, and he started his dive by plunging into the water. He periodically checked his pressure gauge as he made his way through the winding passageways to make sure he had enough air to go back out of the system and have extra in case something went wrong. After more than 30 years, in the 1970s, when renowned diver Oliver Statham last investigated the cave, Colin came across an old guideline that had been left there. He persisted and finally entered uncharted territory, which indicates that he had penetrated areas of the cave system that had not yet been studied by anyone on Earth. He was essentially the first person in human history to go that far into the cave. After some time, Colin observed that his pressure gauge had dropped to two-thirds of an inch of air, which gave him the warning to start diving out to the exit, according to the rule of thirds. This rule states that divers leave one-third of their tank in reserve, as we've already mentioned, in the unlikely event that something should prevent them from emerging from the water. He returned to the surface by following the plan he had laid out. He was the only human still alive who had gone that far into the caves. An outstanding feat that requires a high amount of talent, bravery, and dedication. Suddenly, Colin felt a tug on his tank around halfway through his ascent toward the cave's entrance. He continued to swim forward until he felt another tug, which alerted him to the fact that he was caught in an old guideline that had been abandoned more than 30 years earlier. Colin pulled out his knife and started cutting the line on his own without the help of any other divers. He attempted to free it again, but it remained stuck. Since Gemma, Colin's girlfriend, was at work when the dive happened, she awaited his call at 3.30, but it never arrived. She then called to report the situation, but before the emergency operators got there, the rescue mission turned into a recovery. This was because he was found more than seven hours after Gemma made the call, and that was a substantial amount of time. Colin was discovered dead in a flooded passageway 500 feet below the surface with his corpse completely entangled in ropes and his tanks empty. A group of rescue divers who had all known Colin personally or were his friends participated in the recovery effort. Colin had sacrificed his life to advance discovery, human knowledge, and comprehension. This was a sad incident, especially for a seasoned diver who followed the rules. Since he was diving alone, Nobody was aware of the specifics of what occurred, but Colin would have followed all necessary safety measures. So what brought about this catastrophe? He should have been able to use his knife to cut himself free. The only known information about his passing is that he was discovered to have drowned after getting entangled in ropes. Whatever the case, there are a few plausible possibilities that can explain what might have occurred. This could have happened because he was tangled. He might have become caught between the tank and the emergency regulator, BCD inflator hose, and pressure gauge behind the head. It would be extremely challenging, if not impossible, to remove or cut free if this section were to become tangled in the ropes. Imagine attempting to use a razor-sharp knife while entirely blind to cut the ropes that were well behind his neck. It explores perilous and tough terrain. It proves difficult and risky. Also, it is highly probable that due to the cave's potential to be silted up easily, Colin had a brush up against the side of the cave, which would result in low visibility for him. This blinding situation, coupled with being tangled and trying to cut a rope he can't see loose, would have disoriented him until his tank was empty. Whatever the situation may have been, this unfortunate incident cost the world a skilled adventurer and his family a beloved man. We would like to thank you for watching this video. 
If you enjoyed watching, take a dive on the like and subscribe buttons and hit the bell icon so you get notified when we come back with another exciting cave diving story.